Hi, welcome back to Worth Mending. I'm Alicia and I'm here once again to show you all about darning with our Swift Darning Loom. This is going to be a full overview of how to make a simple darned patch using our darning loom. And I'm also going to be showing you how to use this peculiar cardboard tool that you may have got in your order recently. Last year during our darning workshops, we noticed two problems that came up pretty frequently with people learning how to darn. And that was keeping all of your threads parallel when you're warping around all of your hooks. And then also keeping the bottom edge of your patch nice and tidy and straight. And so we designed the warping helper to hopefully solve both of those problems. The Swift Darner comes with a pretty thorough instruction booklet, but I know it's often easier to learn something new while watching someone do it. So I'm happy to show you and I hope this helps. If you have any feedback, please, classic YouTuber, leave a comment down below, or you could send me an email. I love seeing your emails and any pictures of your mending and darning that you're willing to share. You can send those an email too, or if you're posting them on social media, you can tag with Swift Darner or tag me at Worth Mending, and I'd love to share them. I'm sure this is all way more interesting when you can actually see what I'm talking about, so let's get into it. I always feel like I'm running out of socks to fix for demonstrations, but luckily this one kindly obliged with a new hole here at the bottom. The area around it is thinning a little bit, but it's not too bad. With that assessed, now I put the wooden work surface inside of the sock and adjust it so that the hole is at the top, just lined up below the hooks with enough space around it to get the patch stitched into that strong part of the sock. I'm gonna be darning this with two different colors, one for each direction of the weaving. To roughly measure out my warp strands, I just loop the thread around a hook and reach it down to the bottom of the patch. Then I multiply that across the number of hooks my patch is going to use. I always just add a little bit extra to be safe and have enough left to secure the ends. Thread your needle and let's get started by just placing your warping helper down at the bottom of where you want your patch to go, just below exactly where you want your patch to end. As I mentioned, the Warping Helper is a tool we started including with our darning looms in late 2023 to help you get the warp spacing even and straight at the bottom as you're learning. Once you get the hang loom darning, you probably won't need it. To start stitching, I poke the needle down away from the hole and pop back up where the corner of my patch will be. Then I bring the yarn straight up around the hook. When I flip the hooks, the yarn should stay fairly straight. If not, like here, I just switched the hook beside. The little teeth on the warping helper match up with the hooks and tell me where to place the anchor stitches. That stitch was a bit too big, so I'll try again to make the needle come up before the next marker tooth. I repeat this process all the way across until the warp strings cover the whole hole. The spacing between all the stitches is equal and they land in a tidy straight line at the bottom. After the last hook, I take another long stitch to leave a tail. Then I measure the weft thread. It's about as long as the warp, so I use the same technique of looping, multiplying, and adding a little extra to cut this strand. Any new yarn starts the same way. You just leave a long tail on the underside, bring the needle up at the edge of the patch. Then we can start weaving. I always like to flip the hooks in the direction I'm heading and then push the blunt eye end of the needle through the loops just below the hooks. Sometimes it can help to pull down a bit on your warps or retension the fabric by tugging it over the bottom of the work surface to make it really easy to get your needle through all the loops. Your patch is always built from bottom to top, so bring this yarn down to the bottom of your patch, stitch it down, flip the hooks, and repeat. After getting that first row down, I changed my design a bit and decided I wanted to double up my gray thread. I liked the look of it better than the single strand and this also helped the patch to weave up a little bit quicker. Doubling up is a great way to use thinner yarn, for example, crochet cotton or lace weight yarn with your darning loom to make a patch that's well tensioned but not too bulky. Here's an example of a little sampler I made up using different weights of yarn. As I'm weaving, I always make sure not to tighten my gray yarn too much. 
It should always lay flat and relaxed across the patch. If you notice an hourglass shape starting to form in your darning, it's likely because those horizontal weft threads are being pulled too tight. You can also see I like to squish down on previous rows with my weft pick, which I use to comb down and get a really tight and strong patch. Once my weaving reaches the top of the patch, it gets a little trickier to push the needle through all of the loops. But if I want the strongest, tidiest patch that's going to hold up over time, I need to keep going until it's jammed full. I still make sure that my stitches along each side are spaced evenly, but I start to pick the yarn down even more so I can get as many passes in as possible. On the very last row that I weave, I usually have to pick up each loop one at a time because it's so tight. But remember that those hooks take up space in my loop, so these extra rows will spring back to fill that gap in the end. Remove the t-shirt yarn tie, and then I like to wiggle the loom back and flip it face down on my mending to take my work off the hooks. After that, I'm left with a little pocket, which is super cute and has lots of embellishment potential just not on the bottom of a sock, so I need to sew these loops down to make a complete patch. Depending on how much yarn you have left, it's probably a good idea to switch to a shorter needle here. I stitch each loop individually, picking up the loop from back to front, and then taking a little stitch into the fabric between each loop. The stitch length and spacing here is similar to the way you set up the warp strands at the beginning, just taking little evenly spaced stitches. After about every four or five loops, I pull the yarn snug, and at the very end, same as always, bring the needle down into the fabric and leave the loose end on the back. Your very last step is to secure all of your loose ends. There's really no wrong answer here, and if it doesn't bother you, it's totally fine to just leave the ends as is if they're like long enough to not pull through, but it's nicer if they're finished. If the ends are long enough, I like to thread my short needle and stitch them either into the edge of the patch or through the middle in an X. You can also stitch the edges of the fabric down to your patch so they don't flop around, which is what I'm doing here. Your darning creates a new strong fabric that replaces everything under it. So as long as it's anchored properly around the edges, you can also just trim the hole back a little bit. If you're not worried about the bump a knot can leave, it also totally works to just tie your loose ends in a nice little knot. I really like the square knot. All that being said, there we are, we're done. <laughs> Here's the same sock after a few wears and washes. I get a lot of questions and comments about like the sensory aspect of wearing darned socks. And unfortunately, fortunately, the answer is different for everybody. Personally, after the first little while of wearing a freshly darned sock, I don't notice it anymore. I definitely don't notice it when I'm wearing shoes. The padding of the shoe and the padding of everything just kind of makes it feel like maybe padded hiking socks. I get a lot of like horror stories of my mom used to darn my socks and they were so lumpy and so uncomfortable and that's never gonna be for me. And that's okay too. You can still mend almost anything else in your wardrobe and not have those same sensory impacts. You can also just choose not to darn your thinnest socks. Personally, I also find that um, if I start patching into like the arch of my foot, it's a little bit more sensitive there. So it just, it just takes playing around and practicing. And of course, either way, socks are really great for practicing your darning skills on because there's always another that probably needs a patch. <laughs> I hope that was helpful and thorough and everything you were looking for in a darning tutorial. If you have any requests of other techniques that you'd want me to demonstrate or any further questions that I didn't address, please, again, let me know however you'd like to contact me. I always love hearing your feedback.
Thanks again and take care out there. Happy mending.